Hey everyone, today we have a rather sad story. Uh, one I'm not actually looking forward to talking about uh, and really hits home for me in ways that maybe it doesn't hit home for you, but it probably does hit home for some of you given the average age of my audience and, and where a lot of us are in life. Uh, and it does deal partially with Nintendo Switch, although the Switch isn't necessarily to blame for anything in particular, it just happened to be the device involved with this incident. But before I get into that, I want to remind you we do have a giveaway going on for Nintendo Switch. OLED, a uh, Xbox Series X and a PlayStation 5. Sorry, I was drawing a blank for a moment there. Uh, yeah, we're giving away one of those. Head to the gleam.io link down in the pinned comment or the description. I will note we have made the, or at least I have made the ex executive decision to extend this giveaway through the month of March just due to all the things I'm dealing with, with the home renovation and the studio renovation project I have going on at, at this moment that is going to take up the rest of February. Uh, I will note that if you want to listen, I can give you a bit of an update on that studio renovation towards the end. I'll put a timestamp down below. Uh, obviously, we timestamp all our videos. You can skip the intros, get right into the meat of it, or get right to whatever else I have going on. All right, let's talk about this story. And I I saw this at Nintendo Life, and it makes me a bit sad. And you guys might have already heard about the story. Maybe you haven't. Um, so, so let's just read the headline. It says, Microsoft close to sacking a senior developer who assaulted a seven-year-old son for refusing to stop playing his Switch. Like, assault is a very strong word. Let's, let's read this story written by Damian McFerrin earlier this morning. A senior developer at Microsoft has been sentenced to a one-year community corrections order with a requirement that he perform 100 hours of unpaid work after he was found guilty of unlawfully assaulting his son after the seven-year-old refused to stop playing his Nintendo Switch. The 41-year-old Nicholas Lester, the court heard, throttled his son. Throttle is such a loaded term after losing his temper, and was heard to scream, I will stop him breathing. The attack took place at his West Melbourne home on February 6th of last year. The Herald Sun reported the boy's face went red as he yelled for his mother, who ran to his bedroom upon hearing the commotion. Lester faced the Melbourne Magistrate's Court on Monday, where he was sentenced. He pleaded guilty last week to unlawfully assaulting his son. Magistrate Carolyn Bolt said... Your seven-year-old was effectively using his will against yours. In response, you placed him in a headlock and were heard to be saying the words to the effect, I'll stop you breathing. Your actions on this occasion raised the alarm of three independent witnesses who felt so concerned about what they had heard, the police were called. Children act up, play up, resist reasonable authority. That's what children do. That's what they will continue to do. As a parent, it is your responsibility to never resort to an act of family violence. The buck stops with you. There is never an excuse for family violence, and the court expects that you make choices that will keep your family safe, no matter how angry you feel or what the circumstances are. Lester had a history of disagreements with his now estranged partner over how to handle the parenting of their son. The boy refused to supply an impact statement to the court, but Mrs. Bolt, or Miss Bolt in this case, accepted he must have been terrified by the attack. Even so, the magistrate let Lester leave the court without recording a conviction and said she accepted that he had suffered from depression and had been proactive in taking steps to improve his mental health. She added the fact he had no prior convictions was in his favor and that his job with Microsoft was now in the balance, which... You know, that's not really a, a, a huge shocker on the job front. I do, I am someone that believes that there is a certain separation of home front and uh, work life where what you do in your private life doesn't necessarily mean it should impact your professional life. Just that like your professional life outside of obviously making money doesn't need to necessarily impact your personal life. There can be a lot of crossover. I know this for a fact. I've been working at home for a while. Uh, obviously, I do YouTube stuff, so there is some crossover there, but... I try my best to separate it out. Like, yeah, you know, I, the things I do with my children aren't determined by what I do at my job. But there, there is this this situation where obviously when it becomes public and uh, Microsoft can kind of look poor form to continue to employ somebody who clearly had no problem essentially choking out their child. Uh, it's not a good look for the company, and that's where your professional and private life can cross when you do something in your private life that affects your public image 
which can affect the public public image of your employer. So that's neither here nor there. I don't know if he's going to lose his job. I think Microsoft's put in a tough spot because obviously the court recognized he had depression. So like you got rid of someone who had depression who made a mistake. But here's my take on this. And this is coming from the fact that I'm a parent. I have three children, ages 11, 8, and 5. Wait, 6, sorry. <laughs> 11, 8, and 6. Man, it's been a long... We'll get into the renovation project later. So, look, I am a full-time parent. I'm not a part-time parent. I don't live in a split home. I, my children aren't off somewhere else. I am literally parenting my children 24 hours a day, even when they're at school. You can call it a break if you want. It's not a break. I'm working. So, yeah, I, I'm a parent all the time. And children are extremely, extremely frustrating. They are defiant. They do resist rules. They resist you, you know, trying to, if not tell them what to do, encourage them to do better things. They resist in many different ways, and it only gets worse as they get older. Teenage years are going to be extremely difficult. I was difficult as a kid. I can only imagine what I'm going to be going through with three children. My parents only had two. So I understand the frustration of being a parent, first and foremost. I understand the anger that can come, the stress that can come, how it can make you feel. I know all of this because I deal with it. I've probably been the most stressed in my entire life over the last five days doing this renovation project because, yeah, my kids are around all the time. They had a snow day today. They're around for that. Um, you know, they had school one day where they went to school yesterday, and then the two days prior, guess what? They were also around 24-7 over the course of this renovation project and driving me and my fiance, their mother, absolutely insane. Like, it... You know, we raise our voices when I, in hindsight, regret doing that. I, I wish I didn't resort to raising my voice the way I did towards my children because it's not their fault that their home is torn apart. It's that that they can't play with their toys because there's nowhere to play. Like it's not their fault, but the pestering and the defiance when you're in the middle of intense manual labor. It literally never can get, you know, at least in my opinion, in my life, more stressful as a parent than it has been the last five days. Yet I have a line in the sand that's very black and white. Due to my own stress, frustrations, anger, whatever it might be towards my children, I will never lay a hand on them. Now look, we're not talking about spanking, right? Spanking is... Now, you know, there are some parents are okay with it. Some parents are. Some people think it's abuse. Some people don't. I can tell you right now, Child Protective Services doesn't consider spanking to be abuse. There was a situation when I was a kid about this. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. The point is that maybe you're okay with putting soap in a kid's mouth or spanking them. I don't know. That's your own parenting techniques, and I'm not going to judge you. I personally don't do that stuff, but I got spanked as a kid. I got soap in my mouth. I don't view my parents as any bad, and it didn't make me necessarily want to spank or soap in the mouth of my kids. It's you know neither here nor there. I think that that's not really that traumatic, but I will say smacking your kid across the face or back talking to you. You are only thinking of the outside. Oh, maybe you made them bite their, their tongue or something. So they're bleeding a little bit. You could also give them a concussion while their brains are still developing. You're not thinking that at the time. You're just thinking, I'm mad. You didn't listen. You back talked me. So I smacked you in the face. Yeah, that can cause head trauma. You might not be noticeable and the kid might not understand it, but you can literally damage their brain. And especially while their brain is still developing, that's highly dangerous activity. Choking a kid out headlock even if the kid could breathe which the mother when they came in said the face was turning red so that means the kid was having a hard time breathing uh, at least according to that eyewitness um you know taking the case even putting them in a headlock and threatening to stop them from breathing if they don't get off the switch no Look, kids are going to be defiant. My kids have switches, tablets. My middle child, Aiden, bless his soul, when I'm done making this video, I have to tell him it's time to get off the tablet. It's time to get our bath out of the way. It's time to start getting ready for bed and calm me down and read our books before the end of the day. And I know he's going to throw a fit. And I know it might frustrate me. I already know this is going to happen because I know my child. He's not a baby. He's not a newborn. I'm not just learning about how my child's behaviors. I know how each one of my three children are going to react in pretty much any situation that I need to discipline them, that I need to ask them to get off the thing they enjoy doing, that I need to ask them to go do something else. X, Y, and Z, I could tell you exactly how my daughter and my two sons are going to react before I even say anything because I know them. 
This child that he did this to wasn't some newborn or just newly toddler, you know, new three, like seven years old. I'm sorry. At this point, you already know how your child reacts when you tell him to get off your switch. This isn't the first time your child's told you no and refused to get off. Children are defiant. They want to do what they want to do. They want to have fun. They don't want to listen to adults trying to get them to do something they don't want to do. They don't want to listen. Children want to think they know everything, that they know better, that they know what they should be eating. I want McDonald's and Domino's pizza every day. I don't want to eat my broccoli. I don't want to eat this. I don't want to eat that. I don't want to I want the junk. I want ch potato chips. I want to just stare at my Nintendo Switch all day. I want to stare at my tablet with Roblox for 20 hours. Like, I know. I'm a parent. But violence is never the answer. And I can appreciate that he has depression. I don't think depression is an excuse. I think it's a convenient excuse. I have depression. I don't talk about it much. I've mostly dealt with it. I don't really consider myself to be in that depressive state of mind anymore on the daily like I once was. But I mean, the thoughts still cross my mind here and there. Definitely over this house project. My fiance has severe depression. She had depression when I met her over a decade ago, and it only got worse as we had kids because there's postpartum depression, and when you already have depression, and then you have postpartum depression, it just compounds and sometimes doesn't go away. And we've been trying our best to deal with that. And she struggles. But even she has a line in the sand. Where at her worst state, she would never, ever choke out my kid. Choke out our children. She might send them to the room. She might yell at me to get home right away, no matter what I'm doing, so she can leave and go for a drive. She knows when she's at her worst, the best thing for her and her children is to step away and take a breath. Breathe. Give it a moment. Don't let yourself get to the point you do something that hurts that kid. And I can say this beyond a shadow of a doubt because I am with someone that has the severest of severe depression, the point that suicide has been a contemplated thing and attempted in her life. And she would never lay her hand on that. She would sooner walk away. Take a moment. That's how you deal with these situations. Look, your son, I don't know if you're ever going to hear this, probably not, but if your child has a Nintendo Switch, in this case, that's why we're talking about it, but it, it, it could be any device, and they refuse to get off it when you tell them to, it's pretty simple. Don't get violent. You give your kid a choice. A, they give you that device, willingly or they're grounded and not just grounded for like a day for a week and they will not see if you have to physically remove that device from their hands which that's the thing you can get physical with you can grab that device and pull it from them that's fine if you have to take the device away from them because they won't willfully give it up yeah they're grounded for a week and that device won't even be in the home go drop it off at a friend's house grandparents where get out get out of the home make it so they can't even find the damn thing because that's what children are going to do. They're going to look for it while you're sleeping. I know, because I did it when I was a kid. That's how you discipline. You don't smack the kid. You don't choke the kid out. You give them a choice, and if they make the wrong one, then you take the device from them and ground them. And yeah, grounding as parents sucks. A lot of children, and I'm sure we have some children listening to this, think that you know parents just love grounding kids. No, we don't. You know how much grounding sucks? Having to constantly monitor you to the point that we have to pay attention to, oh my God, did my daughter, she's, my daughter's grounded right now. Did she slip out of the room and, and, and start watching TV before I woke up? I had to pay attention to that. I had to lock my TV down in a way that she can't even turn it on. Like, and that affects my boys who aren't grounded from it. So it sucks as a parent. We would rather 
have our kids be happy and well-behaving, never defiant, doing what they're supposed to do, trying really hard in school, putting forth the effort, you know, you know, doing the, the, the physical activity that they need for their health every single day. Like, we would love our children just to willfully do all this, and that's just not the way kids are because they don't think like that. They don't think about the future. They don't think about good routines built now, brushing your teeth every morning and night, how that impacts them 10, 20 years from now. They don't think about that. They're only worried about, in the moment, what I want to do. In the moment, I want to play Roblox. In the moment, I want to play Mario. In the moment, I want to play, um, you know, Astro Bot on PlayStation 5. Like, in the moment, that's all the children are worried about. They're not worried. They're not thinking ahead. And to be fair, most of us as kids weren't thinking ahead either. Most of us didn't, you know, you know what you wanted to be when you were 10 years old? Maybe you had an idea. Most of us, some of us still searching in our 30s for what we want to do with the rest of our life. The point is, this is crossing the line. I don't know what's going to happen with him in terms I mean, I, I think he got off a little light. I know it's a first-time offense. I understand he has depression, supposedly, and he's, and, and he's getting treatments. And that's all well and good. But, I mean, oh, we're, we're to a point that this is just the first time he's been busted. Usually the first time you're caught is not the first time it's happened. Because if the parent went to that so quickly, off the kid just refusing to get off, just instantly went to that, that tells me this is not a first-time offense. Now, you might go, the child didn't say anything, and that's fine. Children, children, when things become normalized in their life, they think it's okay. They don't think anything of it. Um, the trauma comes later in life. It usually doesn't happen instantly as a kid. It can, by the way. The trauma can affect you as a kid. But usually the effects of it, like my, like the trauma for my fiance, didn't affect her as much as a kid. She was still a happy-go-lucky kid, but has affected her as an adult. That trauma has affected her today. Still affects her today. So you don't think about that in the moment because the kid will act normal and fine. They're not going to be normal and fine later. So I hope that this is just, it never happens again. This person does learn their lesson. I don't know what this 100 hours of work without pay means. Are they forcing them to work at Microsoft? Is this just how um, Melbourne handles uh, community service? Is just another way to say you got to do 100 hours of community service? I don't know. That's neither here nor there. I just, I, I cringe anytime I read stories like this. And the fact that it happened because a kid was playing a Switch. Oh my gosh. Guys, I'm a parent. I know what this is like. I literally have a YouTube channel. And kids are like, oh, you get to play Switch when you want. Oh, yeah, I deal with this. I know. Not an excuse. There's not an excuse. You got to find a way in that brain, no matter how angry and depressed and whatever crap you're dealing with, that you have a line you refuse to cross. No matter what, just like me and my fiance do, we walk away. We walk away. Not the right way to deal with the kids when it comes to violence. You walk away. Get someone responsible there to help you so you can get a bright breather, so you can separate yourself from your frustration. Take a moment to compile yourself before you take the next steps in your parenting. It's important. Now, for those that stuck around this long, you're just here for a quick studio update. One, some people noted in my last video uh, that, man, that, that microphone you're using ironically only sounded bad during the ad. Well, that, that's because I'm not using the same microphone in the rest of the video. The microphone I'm using, guys, is the Elgato Wave 3. Uh, it came out in 2020. Uh, it's not really any difference than the Wave 1 outside of, like, there's some extra physical button uh, stuff, including a physical mute button. Uh, and that's going to be useful while you're live streaming. But again, it is more expensive than the Wave 1. Not really a real reason to get it. There's software attached to it as well. I haven't even touched the software. The reason I, I went with this is because I'm using a different style boom arm with my streaming setup in the in the studio. So this is going to be the microphone I use for that. Uh, and obviously it conveniently works on the go. I still have a Blue Yeti microphone, which, which is really, really good as well. But it's big and it's bulky, and I, I just I wanted to get away from big bulky microphones like that uh, in my streaming setup. So this is what I'm going to be using. And you guys, what do you mean your streaming setup? Isn't your streaming setup just your set? Again, you guys will see all the differences soon enough. It, 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 it well, hopefully by March first. It's, it's going to be pretty insane when I give that final studio tour and start making content in that renovated studio. As for the renovations, we have completed all of the teardowns, repainting. 
um, and everything else that needed to be done before the floor gets put in. The floor I will uh, should arrive tomorrow to be installed. Should take two to three days. We'll see how long it takes. We have to move furniture. I got to do a bunch of stuff. And then once the floor is installed in the studio, um, I can begin the full renovation of the studio where I can finally set things back up, um, finish building out some of the sets that we just unfortunately needed to wait for the floor to get here so we can make perfect exact measurements of things that are going to be either on the floor or coming up from the floor. Hard to explain until you guys see it, uh, but I, I can't wait to show that off. I think it's going to look incredible. Um, I, I'm, I'm really thrilled. And then there's a piece of the studio that doesn't come to next week anyway. So one of the sets that might appear in the final um, studio tour vlog um, is going to not necessarily be complete uh, since that piece won't arrive till next week. And my fiance surprised me with it. So um, what's funny is someone's going to see this thing that I'm going to put on one of my walls and they're going to be like, oh yeah, you're just copying, copying what? My, my fiance doesn't even watch. She surprised me. She doesn't even watch any YouTubers. So, uh, it was just an idea we had based on what I'm doing for that set. Now I'll, I'll say this guys, my sets are, are not wild and crazy. They're simplistic. They're clean, but they're going to look good. Uh, and I, I, I can't wait. Uh, one of the things I'm dreading the most is actually one of the new tables for one of the sets way, you know, between the, the base and the table itself. It, it, it's like 300, 400 pounds. It's insane. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. Eric and I will deal with that. I know my back's killing me. By the way, if anyone has any suggestions on specific lower back stretches and maybe even a couple upper back because I know I have a strain in one of my upper back muscles. It just doesn't hurt as much as my lower back. Let me know. I know some of the basic stretches. Like any of the common ones you think about, I I used to be an athlete. I know I know all those. Um, so I'm looking for maybe some uncommon stretches that could just help relax those muscles and, and stop, you know, maybe make my back spasms not happen so much. And I've never had back spasm problems. This is all new to me. Uh, so maybe, you know, if anyone's got some suggestions, I'm always open to that. Obviously, I know the Internet's there, and I've Googled things. But, you know, I'm always willing to listen to the community. Some of you guys are even personal trainers out there. So um, it, it's good to just try out different things. Uh, maybe even give me suggestions of, of specific videos to watch that can just help me lessen that pain. I know it, it'll, my muscles are going to recover with rest and relaxation and stuff. Warm baths, hot towels, ice packs, etc. But, you know, I'm talking about just something to help me in the moment while I know I still have more physical labor to head to help me continue to push forward and get things done and not feel like I need to be bedridden. I do, by the way, I know the pain tolerance thing and I'm, I got a really high pain tolerance, so I'm, I'm fine, but it, it's still, Hey, you know what? If anyone's got some, some tips and pointers, I'm all ears. All right, folks. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys are amazing. Find a way to smile to end your day and I'll catch you in the next video.